So after T cells, or I should say thymocytes, undergo um, rearrangement of their alpha chain gene and the beta chain gene of the T cell receptor, um, T cells, if they've made it this par far, um, they're double positive. I'm not, I'm not showing on these cells uh, CD4, CD8, but they're there. And they express um, a T cell receptor. But at this point in the thymus, uh, you have to test these T cells to see if they're of any use or any good quality. So if you recall, right, we were getting um, all sorts of interesting shapes in our antigen binding site in our T cell receptor due to the DJ recombination uh, in the alpha chain and the beta chain of the T cell receptor. So we've got this unique and specific three-dimensional structure in our T cell receptor. But what we don't know is, is the structure going to be useful in checking our MHCs? So these T cells, these double positive T cells, need to undergo a positive selection. We have to screen them to see if they interact with our MHC molecules. So this is going to involve cells in the thymus, uh, these epithelial cells that help train the T cells. So here we're talking about thymic epithelial cells. And what you're going to find on these thymic epithelial cells are antigen presentation molecules. You're going to find MHC1 molecules on their surface, and you're going to find MHC2 molecules on their surface. And if you recall, when we talked about these uh, MHC molecules, you express many different isoforms of MHC molecules because you have these HLA genes, A, B, and C, all of them make the alpha chain of uh, MHC class 1. And you've got two copies of HLA, two copies of HLAB, two copies of HLAC, and these are highly polymorphic genes, so you most likely express six different uh, MHC molecules. Same thing with uh, MHC class two molecules. You've got these DQ, DR, and DS, I'm sorry, DQ and DR and DP um, isoforms. And again, you are polymorphic in many of these isoforms. So these are your MHCs, the ones that you have inherited. And in the human population, there are thousands of different MHCs, but you have inherited these. So what's gonna happen during positive selection is you're going to, uh, your thymic epithelial cells, will present self-peptides to your double positive thymocytes. And what we're trying to do here in positive selection is to see and test your T cell receptor variable regions to see if they interact with your inherited MHC molecules. So let's see what this process looks like on cells that survive or don't survive positive selection. So this T cell at the top, T cell number one, it's going to um, check to see if it binds, let's say, that first MHG molecule. So what's, what's going on here? Is, is it trying to check the peptide to know if the peptide is self or non-self? No. At this point, we're just checking to see if the alpha and the beta chain, when they come together and form the variable region, if it engages and binds your MHC molecule. Because if it doesn't, let's say this T cell receptor with its T cell receptor variable region, its antigen binding site, if it has a 3D structure that doesn't bind and check MHCs, then it won't be of any use. And if you recall, when T cell receptors check MHCs, when they bind them and the peptide, part of the alpha chain and the beta chain of the T cell receptors has to bind part of the MHC molecule. And that's what we're testing in positive selection. If your T cell receptor doesn't bind your MHCs, then it's useless. So let's say this T cell doesn't interact with that first MHC. There's weak or no interaction, weak or no affinity for the MHC. Again, we're not testing affinity for peptide. We're testing affinity for your MHCs or self MHCs. Okay, so that T cell moves to the next one. It says, do I have any affinity for this MHC molecule? Now, let's say it has strong to moderate affinity for this MHC. Again, when the, the T cell receptor doesn't care what peptide's loaded in here at this point. At this point, this is in the thymus. There's no infection in the thymus. It's just presenting self-peptides. If there is a moderate to strong affinity between the T cell receptor and, the, and an MHC molecule, then that T cell survives. It has been selected for. It's a good T cell. It's useful, 
because that means when we release it into the body, it will actually bind to and check our MHC molecules. That is positive selection. So one thing that occurs uh, as a result of positive selection is the T cell gets a survival signal, says you get to go out into the world and work. The other thing that happens is selection of either CD4 or CD8. If you recall, I said all of these cells are double positive. And now I'm writing in both CD4 and CD8 molecules. So let's say this T cell receptor has affinity for an MHC class one. That means the CD8 molecule will bind the MHC1 because those two proteins do interact as well. And this cell basically has engaged an MHC1. So what will happen is it will turn off the CD4 gene. So it will no longer be the, make the CD4 protein. And it now becomes a single positive CD8 cytotoxic T cell. So the cell has been selected for it. It's allowed to survive and hopefully go out into the world and check MHCs for infection, for non-self. So it has become now a CD8 positive cytotoxic T cell. All right, let's go to the next cell. So cell number one, that survived. Cell number two, it's going to use its T cell receptor and say, okay, do I have any affinity for this MHC? Nope, I don't. So move on. Do I have any affinity for this MHC? Nope, I don't. Move on. Do I have any affinity for this MHC? Nope, I don't. Move on. Now, if this keeps happening, if this T cell has no affinity for any of our MHC molecules, well, this is a useless T cell. It's, what are we going to do? Let it out into the world? It's not going to check anything. So, what can happen to this T cell? Well, one thing that could happen is receptor editing in the alpha chain, in the TCR, T cell receptor alpha chain gene. And so what happens at this point is the cell can pick another V and another J and put in some more junctional diversity. And so now the alpha chain protein changes. So it looks like that now. Well, we're receptor editing, and now it looks like something else. It looks a little bit different. So now let's test it again. Does it have any affinity for any of our MHCs? If it doesn't, this is a useless T cell. But let's say after receptor editing, now it's changed its alpha chain protein. And let's say now it has strong affinity for this molecule. So what is that? That's an HLA-DR. So that's one of your MHC class II molecules. You make many different types, eight different types of MHE2s at most. And so this T cell receptor will bind to, with strong or moderate affinity, this HLA-DR molecule. So that's an MHE class II. So what does that mean? It means two things. Number one, this cell gets to survive. It gets a survival signal. The other thing that happens is, recall, these cells are all double positive. I wasn't drawing these in before, but they were there before. And now this is engaged a MHE2, and we know CD4 binds MHE2. So when this engages, when these two proteins interact, the gene for CD8 is turned off, and now this becomes a single positive CD4 uh, T cell, which means it might become a helper T cell. So these two cells, these two T cells have undergone positive selection and they get to survive. Good for them. Uh, let's say these two bottom T cells, they uh, use their T cell receptors and they check all the MHCs. They bind none of them weekly, they bind weekly, or they don't even bind them at all. And let's say they go through receptor editing. They change their alpha gene, they pick another V, another J, they make a new alpha protein, they check all the MHCs, they don't bind any of them. They have weak to no interaction between your MHCs, which means they will never, if they're let into the body, never check any of your MHCs. So what use is that? That's of no use. So what happens to these cells? They die by apoptosis. So they did not survive the selection process of positive selection. And so that allows um, this process basically allows you to go through all of your double positive thymocytes and only allow the ones to live that actually will bind your MHC molecules with strong affinity, which means they're checking them for peptides. Now, at the, again, this point here, the, the interaction between the T cell receptor and the peptide, that's not important at this point. So these are all, these thymic epithelial cells have MHC molecules that are loaded with self-peptides but the interaction that we're not we're testing for is not T cell receptor to the peptide, it's T cell receptor to the MHC molecule. And as it turns out, only one to two percent 
of your double positive thymocytes survive positive selection. That means 98% of your thymocytes that rearrange their alpha chain and their beta chain and the T cell receptor, 98% of them won't even bind your MHGs. So what use are they? And they're of no use. That's why 98% of them die after this process. So it seems really inefficient, and maybe it is, but the result of this positive selection process is only those T cells that survive are the ones that bind and will bind and check your MHG molecules. That is the process of positive selection.